Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindi News Analysis brought to you by Shankar Ice Academy. Today I am going to cover the Hindu News edition dated 29th July 2022 and I have taken these articles for discussion. Listen to these discussions and you can answer the poll question that I will post along with this video. Let's move on to the articles discussion session. Now look at this news article. It says that a Chinese ship is expected to visit the Sri Lankan port of Hambantota and India is worried about this. See the Chinese ship that we are talking about here is Yuan Wang 5. This ship is a research vessel that is involved in the space and satellite research. Now this ship is expected to dock in the Hambantota port of Sri Lanka for replenishment and due to this development India is carefully monitoring the situation. Now to understand why India is concerned about this we need to know few facts about Hambantota port and also its significance. See this Hambantota is a deep water port in Sri Lanka and it is also its second largest port. Now the construction of this port was mainly funded by the Export Import Bank of China that is the Exim Bank. But since its construction the port has remained commercially unviable so the Sri Lankan government was unable to repay the loan taken from the Exim Bank of China on time. Now to solve this situation China strategically used its debt trap policy and it signed an agreement with Sri Lanka. This happened in 2017 where a business conglomerate called China Merchants Port decided to provide 1.12 billion dollars to Sri Lanka in return for 70% stake in this port. So a Chinese company is owning a port in Sri Lanka. So by providing loan now China has infiltrated Sri Lanka this is what we call as a debt trap diplomacy of China now another problem is this stake of this Chinese company is for 99 years because a 99 year lease was signed okay but why China is focusing on this port what is its significance for China first importance is the control of this port will secure China's trade route see look at this map here two lines are there both comes from europe and reach china now one of them passes through suez canal and then reaches china and the other one goes to the persian gulf and then reaches china and crucially they both pass through the malacca strait now both these routes passes near sri lanka and that is why hambantota port is important for china because if it has control over this port then the shipping route from persian gulf to the malacca strait will ensure the supply of crude oil to china On the other hand the other route which connects Suez Canal and Malacca Strait will ensure the export of chinese products to the european market so both these routes are important for china's international trade in addition to this hambantota is also a part of the maritime silk route developed by china so that is why hambantota port is important for it other than this the control of this port will also ensure the presence of china in the indian ocean See currently Indian Ocean is under Indian hegemony that is Indian leadership but we just now saw that Chinese import and export happens to the Malacca Strait and this strait is very close to Andaman and Nicobar Islands so if there is a situation where a conflict has uh, happened between India and China then in theory India can choke the Malacca Strait and through this India can cause disruption in the supply chain of China now China wants to counter such a situation so it wants to have a military presence in the indian ocean so that if any situation like this happens then it can easily counter india this is the second reason for china's focus on hambantota port okay now along with these two reasons let us see why it is a concern for india you must have heard about the term uh, string of pearls see this term represents a network of ports in the indian ocean which is developed by china to sideline indian presence in the indian ocean So the aim of string of pearls is to counter India. And unfortunately, Hambantota is one of the port of this string of pearls. You can see this in this image. This is the string of pearls. So this is a concern for India. Another concern is by taking over uh, Hambantota port, China can easily influence Sri Lanka. See, Sri Lanka is an important ally of India. But through the control of Hambantota port, China is trying to influence Sri Lanka. and it might turn sri lanka against india in the future which india does not want so that is why a relationship between china and sri lanka is being closely watched by india okay so where can you use the details which we discussed in this discussion 
So whenever you write about the Chinese aggression in the Asian region or in the Indian Ocean, you can mention this as an example, and you can mention why it is important for China. Or if there is a question which asks how China is gaining influence to counter India, there also you can write about this example. Okay. Now let me take the next news article. So look at this editorial article. As its title suggests, this article is about tigers and their conservation. It is written because today is International Tiger Day. Particularly in this editorial, author has pointed to those factors that should be given attention so as to save tigers from extinction. So as usual, we'll be covering certain prelims related points, and then we'll be covering some mains related points also in this discussion. We'll be talking about tigers, about their characteristics. about their habitat will be also listing out the factors that are mentioned by the author and finally will be ending with suggestions to save tiger population now this is the syllabus for this discussion so we'll be starting with knowing about the indian tiger as you know it is the national animal of india and also it is one of the known eight races of tiger species its scientific name is panthera tigris tigris but actually it is famously known as the royal bengal tiger See this tiger species is magnificent and it is a striped animal as you can see in these images it has a thick yellow coat of fur with dark stripes now these tigers are top predators in an ecosystem so its prey base is also white it actually hunts even larger species like cheetah samba deer nilgai gaur wild pig even elephant calves leopards and wild buffaloes are its prey Overall the species is known for its grace, strength, agility and enormous power. That is why it could even hunt bigger animals. Now in India if you see Royal Bengal tiger is found almost throughout our country. Actually India is home to more than 80% of the global population of adult free ranging tigers. Uh, as per the latest cycle of All India Tiger Estimation of 2018, our country has an estimated tiger population of 2967. Along with this it is also known that India harbors more than 60% of global genetic variation in the tiger species. This is why the tiger population of India is quite special. You should also note that in India the tiger occupied forests have been classified into six landscape complexes. They are the Shivalik Hills and the Gangetic Plains, then the Central India, then Eastern Ghats, Western Ghats, Northeastern Hills and Brahmaputra Plains and finally is the Sundarban region. Now if you ask me whether it is found only in India the answer is no because it is also found in our neighboring countries like Nepal Bhutan and Bangladesh now if you talk about its habitat so actually it could survive in a wide range of habitats like in high mountains mangrove swamps tall grasslands dry and moist deciduous forests and also it is found in evergreen and shola forest systems now like any other species tiger also faces many threats i have given a list of threats here you can just go through it now because of these threats the panthera tigris tigris or the royal bengal tiger has been given a high conservation status globally that is it has been listed as endangered under the iucn red list of threatened species along with this even in the cites convention it has been listed under the appendix 1 and in india also it has a high protection under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act of 1972 So remember whenever we talk about conservation status try to learn about the IUCN status sites as well as WPA status of that species but why conserving this species is so important we just saw that it is a major predator right this is mainly because tiger is an umbrella species so when we call a species as umbrella species it means if that species is conserved then it is expected to confer protection to a large number of naturally co-occurring species also so any conservation efforts on this species will result in the conservation of other co-occurring species and through this the conservation of tiger ensures a viable population of other wild animals such as uh, certain co-predators its prey base etc it also ensures the ecological viability of the entire area and habitat this in turn ensures the water and climate security of the region so overall tiger plays a crucial role in saving the forest ecosystem now you should understand that more than any other country india has to play an important role in its conservation as i said india has more than 80% of the global population of this tiger so india is more responsible for its conservation there is also one another reason it is because the threats which we saw now it led to a drastic decline in population of this species Actually the population was on the way to extinction 
so the indian government had to take several steps to ensure the conservation of this species and one such important measure is the project tiger it was launched in april 1973 as a centrally sponsored scheme see this project funds several conservation activities like anti poaching initiatives strengthening infrastructure within tiger reserves then habitat improvement and water development is also taken care under this project tiger along with this under the supervision of project tiger the tiger reserves in india have also increased currently we have 52 tiger reserves the latest one was notified this year it is the ramgarh vishdhari tiger reserve in rajasthan this is just an additional fact for you so from this what we could understand is due to the efforts taken nationally and globally tiger population has increased see actually according to a recent assessment by iucn tiger population has increased by 40 percentage since the year 2005 this is a crucial fact you can mention this in your mains answer writing right because it could be an example of how conservation efforts lead to population rise of the species you can cite this example But now let us come to the editorial. So according to the author, just increasing the population would not mean tiger will not go extinct in India. It is because increasing population of a species is just one factor. There are also other factors that ensures a viable population exists in a protected area. And according to the author, such other factors are not given enough attention. See here, just know that a viable tiger population is the one which has 80 to 100 tigers. with a minimum of 20 breeding females and they should also have a sex ratio skewed towards females so this is the viable tiger population according to national tiger conservation authority now let me come to the factors which need more attention see the first factor is not having enough breeding individuals having enough breeding population will ensure required population growth correct So according to the author populations which are smaller than 100 breeding individuals have a high probability of extinction and that is why this factor should be given more attention now there is another factor that demands attention which is the process of ensuring that the existing tiger populations are part of larger landscapes why larger landscapes it is required so that they remain connected with other population here connectivity is the crucial part See, when a population is small and isolated they face high probability of extinction this is normally we see but why this happens why small and isolated populations have high probability of extinction let me explain now this happens due to inbreeding what is inbreeding so it is a mating scheme where closely related animals mate For example in a species the parent and offspring or the full brother and sister or even the half brother and sister they mate this is called as inbreeding and they will be called inbred animals now such inbred animals are less productive they are less fertile inbreeding also affects their longevity and also they are more likely to have genetic disorders but why this happens why inbreeding leads to all these problems This is because inbreeding uncovers genes that produce abnormalities or even those genes which cause death in the offspring. Now to understand what is the process behind it we need to understand genetic drift. See genetic drift means the random fluctuations in the number of gene variants in a population. Here focus on the term random. It happens randomly. This genetic drift takes place when the occurrence of alleles increases and decreases by chance over time. What are alleles? They are the variant forms of a gene, okay? They are also a gene. Now it is a known fact that typically a genetic drift occurs in small populations. Now in small populations, any involved allele is either lost by population or that allele will become the only allele present in the population. here both these possibilities are a problem because both of them decrease the genetic diversity of a population that is any one allele is disappearing or any one allele is becoming dominant both will be having negative impact on the genetic diversity so genetic drift can result in loss of rare alleles and even decrease the gene pool let me make it clear for you so i'm saying here one particular gene could become dominant or that gene could be lost now assume that there is a disease causing gene what if that becomes dominant that means then that gene will be passed on to all the offsprings of that species on the other hand if that gene disappears then it is a positive for the population right but unfortunately in animal species most often the problem causing genes are the ones that becomes more dominant 
there is some science behind it let me not go into that what you need to understand is genetic drift happens where certain alleles increases and decreases by chance over time and through this genetic diversity is affected but why genetic diversity is important see this is the one that ensures the survival of a species how see genetic diversity strengthens the ability of species and populations to resist diseases pests changes in climate and other stresses you would have heard about the term survival of the fittest right so whoever is fit will survive now this genetic diversity ensures that but when there is no genetic diversity at all then the survival becomes a question actually this is the reason why we say breeding tigers in captivity is not conservation because there will not be any genetic diversity i could give an example for you here take the simlipal tiger reserve in odisha there we have a isolated tiger population and it is a small population where genetic variation happened and this led to black tigers population as you can see in these images okay so these kinds of genetic variations will occur it could also be a positive change but unfortunately often it becomes a negative one affecting the population of the species small populations lead to inbreeding this affects the survival of the species and it leads to extinction this is the process here okay now we particularly that is india must be worried about this factor this is because in india many tiger populations are confined within small protected areas and many of them even have a population smaller than 100 we saw that when the population is smaller than 100 then there will not be a possibility of survival rather that population will lead to extinction now these smaller populations are further affected when there is no connectivity between the populations and this happens due to fragmentation of landscapes now how the fragmentation happens this is because we build barriers or landscapes that impede the movement of species here such uh, barriers could include uh, agricultural fields built up areas high traffic roads wide highways etc but if you see still indian tiger population is surviving it is not at the verge of extinction as of now according to author this is because some of the protected areas in india provide an intervening landscape which facilitate the connectivity and movement of tigers so when there is connectivity they will be able to move from one landscape to another landscape and they will bring in genetic diversity thereby saving the species so in this regard what needs to be done for the other landscapes first they have to safeguard the existing wildlife and tiger corridors or they should also build new ones see these corridors help the wildlife to move freely without any human intervention so these are necessary then another suggestion is constructing an underpass this will also allow the wildlife movement and connectivity another suggestion given is genetic rescue what is genetic rescue it is a new term take note of this term here see so this genetic rescue is defined as an increase in population fitness due to the genetic contributions of immigrants here fitness would mean the ability of an organism to survive and reproduce so a genetic rescue increases population fitness and how that happens it happens due to the genetic contributions of immigrants immigration means a species from another region has moved to our region now the benefit is that this process improves inbreeding depression and it also restores genetic diversity of inbred populations through gene flow so here what is happening is a species from another region is moving to my region and it will be bringing a different gene flow to my region and this will be creating genetic diversity so basically genetic rescue works by adding genetic diversity to small population now such genetic diversity as i said could be added through immigration that is by introducing specific individuals there is also another way it is nothing but a scientific way which is gene editing but i don't think as of now this method is used but in the future there is more potential for gene editing and saving the species which are at the verge of extinction okay so genetic rescue is an important suggestion to save any species from extinction along with this if there are steps that could be taken for protecting the prey base of that uh, species then this will also help so these are some of the points that you have to remember regarding tiger conservation today we saw about tigers that is the royal bengal tiger or panthera tigris tigris it is a striped animal it has yellow coat of fur it is a top predator it has wide range of diet india is home to more than 80 percentage of tigers and we also have a greater global genetic variation and there are six tiger landscapes 
Shivalik Hills and the Gangetic Plains, then Central India, Eastern Ghats, Western Ghats, Northeastern Hills and Brahmaputra Plains, finally Sundarbans. Then we saw the threats and conservation status, endangered in IUCN, then Schedule 1 in Wildlife Protection Act, Appendix 1 in Sites. Then we saw that tigers are umbrella species and few facts about Project Tiger also that was initiated in 1973 and currently we have 52 tiger reserves in our country. The latest one was notified in Rajasthan. And according to IACN, there is an increase in tiger population by 40 percent each since 2005. And according to author, two main factors have to be given attention for safeguarding any species, especially the tiger species. First is having enough breeding individuals in a population. And second is making the existing population a part of larger landscape. This will provide connectivity and uh, the connectivity will reduce inbreeding and when inbreeding is reduced then there will be more genetic diversity and when there is more genetic diversity then that species will survive. And finally we also saw some suggestions. First suggestion was to safeguard existing wildlife uh, corridors or building a new one. Second suggestion was to construct an underpass. Third one was the genetic rescue and fourth one was protecting the prey base. Okay. See, in this discussion, even though we saw many points related to tiger, you can use these points with reference to any other species also, especially the suggestions part and the factors that are not given uh, enough attention part. Because it is almost true for every other species that is on the verge of extinction. So, using a single discussion, you can answer questions like uh, what steps could be taken to safeguard a species from ex extinction. Then you can mention these four points of uh, suggestions which we just saw. Or if there is a question that asks for the reasons for uh, extinction, even though there is a increase in population, then you can mention about the factors that are not given enough attention. So, these are the areas where you can use the points we discussed in today's discussion. Okay. Now, let me take the next news article. Look at this news article now. It says that in a recent event, a party president has said that India can become a Vishwaguru only through Sark. See here, Vishwaguru means a global teacher. So, through Sark, India can aim to become a global leader. This is what has been mentioned in this news article. Now, to understand how this can happen, let us see the significance of SARC for India. Before that, SARC stands for the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. It was established in 1985 after a SARC charter was signed in Dhaka of Bangladesh. See, it consists of eight member states. All of them are neighbors of India. It includes Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka and also India. Its secretariat as well as its headquarter is in the Nepal. It is at Kathmandu. See, one of the objectives of SARC is to promote the welfare of the peoples of South Asia. It also aims to improve their quality of life. Along with that, ensuring economic growth, social progress and cultural development in the region is also one of the objective. And finally, by building mutual trust, SARC aims to build collective self-reliance. Now, let me tell you why SARC is important for India. See, as an organization, SARC reflects the South Asian identity of the countries, both from the historical point of view as well as from the contemporary viewpoint. In addition to this, the SARC countries also share a common geographical identity. So, using this commonality, India can strengthen its relationship with its neighboring countries that are members of SARC. Why strengthening a relationship is important? Because it will help in addressing the regional issues. And if India can do this, then India can become a global power and also a global teacher as the news article mentions. So that means to address the regional issues, SARC will act as an important forum. Also note that SARC countries have many common features. So their problems are also similar. Therefore, a common forum like SARC is also necessary to address such problems. For example, take the problem of open defecation. It is a problem in all the SARC countries except Bangladesh. So, via SARC, Bangladesh can share the best practices with the rest of the SARC nations and they can use those practices and end open defecation. Similarly, if you take the cross-border drug trafficking, here also only through cooperation the problem can be solved. So, for ensuring such cooperation, a forum like SARC is required for India. Another significance of SARC is the regional stability. See, by establishing cooperation through SARC, regional stability can be maintained. And for this, mainly India and Pakistan must not bring their bilateral issue to this forum. 
here we should learn from asean nations because even the asean member countries have various bilateral territorial disputes but when they come to a common forum like asean they ignore the differences and focus on common good but if you take india and pakistan in sark they keep on fighting so what we have to do is we have to learn from the asean nations and we have to follow their principle and we should focus on the common good and enhance the regional cooperation and this will be helpful in ensuring the regional stability also and finally sark will also help in ensuring economic growth for the region see the sark region is one of the most densely populated regions in the world along with this even the region has the significant uh, arable land in the world arable means fertile in addition to this all the member nations are also witnessing an average gdp growth rate of 5 percentage and india is currently focusing on act east policy so by combining the act east policy of india with the sark platform connectivity can be established between south asia and southeast asia through this economic prosperity of the sark nations including the prosperity of india can be ensured so because of all these reasons sark is important for india okay in addition to this i will also mention another point because in the humban tata discussion we saw that chinese influence can become a problem for india in sri lanka so through sark where china is not present india can become close to sri lanka and can also strengthen its relationship and counter china whenever there is a conflict between india and china okay so with these points in mind now let us get to the next discussion now let me take this last news article for discussion it is about the suspension of mps from rajya sabha you would have heard the news that three more uh, members of rajya sabha has been suspended totally 23 members have been suspended so far from the house see they were suspended because they were holding placards in the house see placard is nothing but a, a poster like thing a sheet which they hold so today we are going to see under which rule or which statute the suspension has been done and what are the conditions that would lead to such suspension we'll also see the procedure that must be followed during this suspension see in a house proceeding the role of presiding officer is of utmost importance because the presiding officer of the house has to ensure the orderly conduct of the business in that house as you know presiding officer in lok sabha is the speaker and in rajya sabha presiding officer is the chairman So like in any other office even in parliament the business of the house should be conducted in an orderly manner then only the house would function smoothly now for this both the presiding officers that is the speaker as well as the chairman they have been given certain powers to force a member of the house to withdraw from the house they can do this when that said member is disrupting the functioning of the house but they do not have this power just like that just because they are the presiding officer it is provided by a statute in case of speaker the speaker's power to suspend the member is derived from rules of procedure and conduct of business of uh, lok sabha this rule book provides this power to the speaker of lok sabha under rule number uh, 373 374 and 374a the speaker has the power to suspend a member to ensure order in the house similarly for rajya sabha also there is a rule book it is the rules of procedure and conduct of business of rajya sabha and under the rule number 255 and 256 the chairman of rajya sabha has the same power to suspend a member from the house okay so the two rule books of rajya sabha and lok sabha provide the power to the chairman and the speaker to suspend a member from the house respectively but note that there is something common between the power of the speaker and the chairman that is both can suspend the members on two conditions first condition is when a member's behavior is grossly inappropriate and when that behavior is willfully obstructing the business of the house this is the first condition the second condition is when the member does not respect the authority of the presiding officer and the rule book okay so these two conditions are common for both the houses so on both these conditions the speaker and the chairman can suspend the members now what is this procedure followed here if the presiding officer wants to suspend someone they have to first present a motion against that member we know that in parliament everything happens through a motion so here also a motion is first presented and then that motion has to be adopted if it is adopted then the member will stand suspended for the period mentioned in the motion okay so like they are uh, passing a motion for suspending a member they can also pass a motion again to readmit that member so this also means that without a motion that member could not be readmitted this is the common procedure for both lok sabha and rajya sabha but the speaker of lok sabha has a special power also this special power is provided under rule number 374a 
Under this rule, the speaker can suspend even without a motion. This can happen when the member comes to the well of the house and is willfully disregarding the rules and obstructing the procedure of the house. When this happens, the speaker can immediately name that member and the said member will stand immediately suspended. There is no need for a motion here. So remember, providing such kind of uh, suspension is a specific power of Speaker of Lok Sabha. Here I said a term called as well of the house. See this area in front of the speaker, right? This is the well of the house. So under these rule books, the speaker and chairman has the power to suspend a member. But note that what would constitute an orderly conduct is mentioned in the handbook for the members. There are two handbooks for Rajya Sabha and uh, Lok Sabha. Now the handbook for members of Rajya Sabha mentions that production of an exhibit on the floor of the house is against the parliamentary customs and conventions. So such production of exhibit will also include displaying of placards. And that is why under this the members have been suspended now. Here I have given you the uh, parliamentary customs and conventions and also the parliamentary etiquette. Just go through it. It has some important uh, points like, you know, they have to bring in uh, identity card when they are coming for sitting of the house. They have to sign the attendance register every day like every other employee in a company. And if you come to parliamentary etiquette, you can see that they should be present in the house before 11 a.m. And when entering, they should bow to the presiding officer. So like this, certain etiquettes and customs and conventions are present in parliament. And they have to be followed. If they are willfully disregarded, then that member can be suspended. I hope you got a whole idea about this suspension issue. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next session, which is the practice questions discussion session. Today I have three practice questions for you in the prelims format. This is the first question. Consider the following statements in regards to the suspension of members from Rajya Sabha. Two statements are given. First statement is, The power of chairman to suspend members is mentioned in the rules of procedure and conduct of business in Rajya Sabha. This statement is correct. We saw this during discussion. Second statement, The member can be suspended indefinitely. This is incorrect. If the suspension is for indefinite period, then it would be disqualification, right? So, from that itself, we can say this is incorrect. See, once the motion for suspending is adopted by the House, the member will be suspended only for a period not exceeding the remainder of the session. So, when the next parliamentary session happens, the member can rejoin the parliamentary proceedings. Okay. So, statement 2 is incorrect and the question asks for the correct statements. So, the correct answer is option A, 1 only. Now, let me take this next question. Which of the following countries are members of both SARC and BIMSTEC? S A in SARC stands for South Asia, B in Wimstek stands for Bay of Bengal. So if you at least know this, you can eliminate few options because Maldives is not in Bay of Bengal. From that I can eliminate C and D. I have to choose between 3 and 4. Sri Lanka and Myanmar. See Sri Lanka is a member of both the organizations but Myanmar is a member of Wimstek only. So the correct answer is option B 1, 2 and 3. Now this is the third question. Arrange the following straits from north to south. Strait of Ormo, Park Strait, Babel Mandeb Strait, Malacca Strait. Look at this map here. You can see where all these straits are. So you can easily say the first one should be Strait of Homo and the last one should be Strait of Malacca. So one should be in the first, four should be in the last. You can eliminate the remaining options. Now the confusion will come between Park Strait and Babel Mandeb Strait. Here Park Strait is below Babel Mandeb Strait. So the correct order is 1, 3, 2, 4. Now the quiz question for the day, I will give that as a poll in the community section. Don't miss that poll. Now this is the main question for today. What conservation measures can be taken to safeguard the tiger population in India from extinction? Now before today's discussion, if you would have seen this uh, question, you would have mentioned about Project Tiger, then designating more protected areas like tiger reserves, and you would have just simply mentioned about uh, corridors and all. But after today's discussion, your answer will be more detailed. Like you have to mention about you know ensuring more breeding populations, then uh, ensuring genetic diversity. Then for connecting of uh, different landscapes, you can suggest for uh, wildlife corridors or separate tiger corridors. Then you can uh, talk about the underpass and then you can mention about uh, genetic rescue. And in that you can talk about uh, relocation, immigration of uh, species, reintroduction of species and all. 
सो दिस इज हाउ विथ ईच डिस्कशन अबाउट अ टॉपिक यू हैव टू बिल्ड योर आंसर ओके दो इंटरेस्टेड एस्पिरेंट्स कैन राइट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन एंड पोस्ट इट इन दी कमेंट सेक्शन वेन एवर विल गेट टाइम विल रिव्यू योर आंसर so with this we have come to the end of hindi news analysis for 29th july if you found this video useful click the like button and also share this video with your friends and if you have not subscribed to our channel immediately subscribe to update yourselves with current affairs thank you